right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you for joining me this evening. My name is Aaron Daffron, and I want to walk you through some free options that are available online. You just need a little bit of imagination and experience um, with just a few programs, and if not, I'm going to walk you through the beginnings of them so you can make your own do-it-yourself math tutorial videos. So our agenda for this evening is first we're going to do a little bit of an overview. I'm going to share the secret sauce, which are the required materials and uh, programs that are available free online. And then I will uh, stop the presentation and actually get into each of the three programs I want to share with you and not give you a full tutorial. That would be completely different webinars, but just show you the three big buttons that you need to hit on each of these programs. What, what are the key things that you need to do? And then at the very end, I will open it up uh, for questions. So if you have a question, write it down, or you can put it in the text, and we'll have a chance to kind of look at that at the end. So let's just take a look at the overview first, because before we get into the nitty-gritty of the math, um, the math videos, you need to have the end in mind, and this is from Stephen Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. You need to begin with the end in mind. So if you've never seen one of my videos, um, we're not going to sit and watch the entire thing, but let me just show you what the beginning part of it looks like. And so it starts with just a blank slate, which is just a, a video that I have, or an image that I created. And I just use that every single time. And you see I handwrite um, the number three for grade. I'm always handwriting the topic down of the problem. This particular video I selected just because I needed, we're talking about pictographs, and that would take forever to draw. So I, was just, I just found some, some images online and just slapped it on there. You notice also there is some text. So there's an opportunity to type out text if you needed to work with a word problem but you're also going to see a lot of annotations and just drawing, coloring. There's some basic things. So that's, that's the end result. So how do we get from not knowing how to do anything to that? Well, first, what is it we're talking about here? Math tutorial videos. I've had people, when I share videos, ask, hey, can you do this for reading language arts? I cannot find a way to do that quite yet, and there's a lot of math that still needs to be done. Language arts, uh, unless you're really dealing with just grammar, right? And when we're, I'm talking about language arts, I like books, I like writing, I don't necessarily like the technical stuff. Language arts does not necessarily lend itself to this type of video because it's, for the most part, it's always dependent upon the book. You have to, if you're going to use a higher level thinking and analysis, it's all text dependent. Whereas this, you can just get a piece of chalk and a chalkboard virtually, and just you can put some numbers out there. Obviously, we want our students to get to the word problems, but this is more for the basic, um, just the basic algorithms. So before you get started, think if you want to do science videos, social studies videos, this may or may not be the best thing for you. So first get that in mind. What's great is you don't have to host it. Put it on YouTube. And it's free, it doesn't cost you anything to host these things on YouTube. It's easily, easily embeddable, easy to put on your, um, on your home sites, on your school website. You have like a Google Classroom. It's super easy. YouTube is, is obviously the, the, one of the most popular sites just on the internet. But the beauty of a math tutorial video is it's asynchronous. Your students can watch it whenever they want to, 10 o'clock at night, 3 o'clock in the morning. If you go too fast, but you record it, they can go back and watch it again, again, and again. So it's, it's a good supplement for live uh, teaching, which we'll never be able to replace. I'm not saying we replace uh, live teaching with videos, but it's a nice supplement. And then it really gives your students access and, more importantly, your parents access. So if the student doesn't have uh, a real firm grasp on what you're trying to get, and the parents not there watching what's going on, this is a great way to put it out there so they can watch it whenever they want to. So I would, before we get into the nitty gritty, um, it took me several years to kind of figure out where I wanted to go. There's actually quite a few questions you're going to need to ask and answer, not all at once, 
But just think about this. What, are you, what is your focus and what is your style? Uh, so when I'm talking about those things, I'm talking about, you saw on the video that I showed on the previous slide, uh, you saw a pictograph. That's as fancy as I'm going to get. There are plenty of programs out there that do full-on computer animation. They do cartoon graphics. That's great. I don't have the time for that, and I'm not a digital designer like that. So you need to keep very, uh, very realistic goals in mind as to how much you want to do, because it, it shouldn't take you three days to produce a three-minute video. That's probably not worth the effort you're going to put in there, unless you're trying to sell it commercially. Think about your content. I've already mentioned math would work well with this. If you want to do some editing, if you're into that part of uh, writing and, and grammar, you could probably get away with that. But if it's – this is geared more towards algorithms and just following a set of steps. If it's more content-dependent uh, like history, science, there's quite a, a few websites that have some good science and history videos. And this might not compete with that. Also, make sure you're looking at the, the specifications of the video. Are you wanting it to be a certain length? Are you needing to include certain things? Do you have to plan some of these things out? Are you wanting to brand it? Are you wanting to put your name on there? You saw on my video, I had my little name at the bottom. I, I found a name, 5-Minute Math, and every single video has that because that's how I'm trying to get that central theme through all of my videos. If you're wanting to really take this to the next level, that could be something you want to think of ahead of time. And uh, do you want playlists with themes, or do you just want individual videos? My direction was I'm going to build individual videos, but it's going to be accessible as a playlist. So I've got a third grade playlist that has 63 videos. Maybe you don't want anything that big. Maybe you just want a sample lesson. Maybe you want to do it by lesson 5.6 out of your math uh, curriculum, and that's the theme of the video, rather than by a certain standard. So those are just things to think about, and are you wanting to monetize it? YouTube will let you monetize it. You can start making a little bit of money. It's never going to be a full-time side hustle, but you have to have a 1,000 subscribers, which is a lot harder than you probably think. Uh, you'll start your YouTube page, and your friends, and your family, and your students will subscribe, and they'll get you 38 subscribers. If you want to monetize it, you're going to need 4,000 watch hours within a year, which isn't the hardest thing to get. It's the subscribers. So just realize. And are you visible picture in picture? My videos, it's just the chalkboard. And so I'm just going to particular uh, video my face, but sometimes you want to be talking in a live lesson, kind of like kids do when they're streaming video games. So be thinking about that. And most importantly, why are you doing it? It's going to be tough. It's going to be a commitment. You don't want to start something and get five videos in and then quit, because that's going to be a letdown to the people that were actually starting to enjoy it. So get that why in your brain. It doesn't have to be cemented in your brain, but at least think about it. Because when the newness wears off and it starts becoming a slog, that's what's going to get you through. All right, so that's enough of the big stuff. Let's talk about what we actually need to make these videos. So you are going to need to draw something. There are two different options. Uh, this is a drawing tablet. It can work with any computer, and it kind of stands on its own. You see you have a nice stylus down here in the bottom right corner. You get that fine tip is going to be extremely important. The only issue with this is sometimes some of these tablets are very specific. They only work with a particular drawing program or the drawing program you have, which I'm going to share one with you, might not work with it. So that's just something you would check. But if you don't want to invest in a brand new laptop or an iPad, this might be the way to go. You just get something, it probably it either be Bluetooth, most likely it'll plug in with USB, and you just draw on that, and then whatever you draw will be on the computer. That's one way to get the drawing on. I actually have option two, and I actually found this picture. This is the actual laptop I'm using right now. It's an Asus, and um, an Asus Vivo Flipbook 14. There's um, tons of options out there. 
Um, Microsoft has some good stuff. I chose this because I wanted a laptop in case I need to type, but this is a 360 degree touchscreen. So if I flip it around, I can, it rotates from a, a computer to a touchscreen, so I can flip it upside down and I'm just looking at my screen because the laptop, the keyboard is behind it and I can draw on it like a tablet. It does both things. I can type documents on here, I can type emails with a regular keyboard and then flip around and I can draw it as a tablet. So, um, if you have a touch screen, that's going to be great. If you do not have, if you have a touch screen but it doesn't rotate up 360 degrees, you might consider this. Just because the angle at which you're going to have to hold your pen to draw on your laptop unless you lay it flat might be a little bit awkward. The great part about this is because it works with any application. This particular a drawing pad might only work with some. Everyone's got their own thing, so you have to figure out what is your, this is a smaller monetary investment, but this is going to be easier to use for everything. There's going to be no limitations. So you are going to need a way to draw. That's physical material number one, either a touch screen, I'll go back to here, or a drawing tablet. Now let's get into the programs. Oh, I'm sorry, there's one thing we need to get to. You are going to need to draw something. Now, this is actually what I have. This is what I use for every single one of my videos. And I linked it right here, and I checked the link right before I uh, got on this website. Amazon's got it for $13.99. You get this little glove, which is nice, because if you rest your palm on your touch screen, it's going to reject it, which means it's not going to draw. Because sometimes if you're trying to draw on the board, or you're trying to, if any of you have been a teacher a long time, or I've been in education for 20 years, you remember what would happen when you would try to draw on those old overhead projectors and you would rest your, uh, your, your palm on there and by the end of the day, the side of your hand was green and blue because of all that ink. Well, that's what would happen if you try to draw on a touchscreen, iPad, tablet, whatever it is. It's going to pick up your hand. So this is a nice tool and it's got a fine tip. Most places, um, if you go to any type of conference, they're going to give you swag and it's always going to have a little a little just blunt rubber stylus, those are horrible. They give you very, very fat lines and it's hard to get intricacy. Um, so this is what I would suggest that you're gonna want a fine tip stylus. Going back to this picture, you see how it's got that fine tip. Just make sure it's a fine tip stylus. I made many videos with a big fat, just freebie stylus that was given like at a, at, with a, as a dual pen type thing and it's just horrible. So you want something to grip like a pencil so you can write normally. Now we're going to get into our programs. All right, there are three programs I use, and I'm actually going to click into them real quick to see what they are. This first one is called Sketchbook. This is how I draw. It is free. It works on Macs and PCs. It's got easy controls for drawing, uh, including pencil types, colors, thicknesses, you can insert images, uh, you can add text, and there are multiple layers, which actually is very, very nice. So let me exit out of my full screen, and just, I've got it pulled up right here. When you click on this link right here, and this, this whole uh, slide deck will be available on the website at the end of this. So uh, you can just click on it, go straight to it, but it's going to come up to the screen. It's just sketchbook.com. It's a really cool tool. The only thing is, is it, it's really big up at the top, so if you've got something small, you have to scroll down just a little bit, and then boom, download. And there it is, Mac, PC, um, it's fine. I'm not sure about iPads. I mean, that's Apple, but you might just want to check on that. But that's how I draw, and I'll get into that a little bit later. So uh, let me go to this next one. I'm just going to stay out of presentation mode since I'm going to jump back into it. First, you need to draw. That's what I use as the Autodesk sketchbook. Secondly, you are going to need to record it. How are you going to get the video from your computer onto YouTube? And so there is a really simple um, screen recording program I use called ShareX. It, you can record the entire screen, which I do. You can record parts of screens if you just need to do a window. Uh, simple controls, which I like. Uh, it just uses hotkeys. And it's good quality. All of my videos have that. It gives you voice and audio. All you need is a simple screen recorder. There's tons of free stuff out there. And if there's free stuff out there, don't pay for it. So that website, which will be linked 
it, like I said, in this slide deck or PowerPoint. I'll have it available in both options on the website. The website is actually getsharex.com, uh, but once you get there, it's just right there, download. Now, this one works for uh, Windows only. So if I run Windows, if you've got Mac, um, you're just going to just type free screen recorder. Just Google it, free screen recorder for Mac, and you'll find it. This is just the first one I found, and I've just never had any reason to go away from it. Third, you might not think you will, but you're going to need a video editor. You are going to um, need to cut splice you can even get into some subtitles if you want to now this is one i would definitely suggest clicking this link because even if you are taking notes and you try to google right now vsdc video editing programming this will be the third or fourth hit uh, there's another program out there that is kind of free kind of not free and they put their keywords in the they actually show up first when you search specifically for vsdc because they just got their Google algorithm correct. So you, you, here you're going to edit, you're going to splice, you're going to combine video segments. I'll talk about what that means uh, in just a moment. There are some advanced features, but you probably won't need it. And it's a simple interface. There's a lot of extra stuff, so you might need to ignore it. And I'll show you what the big three buttons are that you need to get to. But it, it's, it's your one-stop shop. And this is going to go to this particular link right here. And it's a free editor. Uh, there are two different options here. This is for Windows as well, so you have to look to see. Uh, Macs typically come with uh, some pretty good programs already pre-installed on like iMacs or whatnot. It's going to ask you for the, dot, the X64 or the X32 version. Unless you have a computer that is older than 10 years, it's probably going to be this X64. If you have a computer that's older than 10 years, uh, 10 years older than 10, it might be this dot, this X32, but at that point I would say you're going to have a hard time with the drawing program because it's going to be so slow, you might not get what you need to. So most likely you're going to be this right here. So that's it. Those are your three uh, big items besides figuring out how you're going to draw on your touch screen or draw on your tablet using the drawing program. You're going to need a screen recording program and then you're going to need a video editing program. So. Uh, let's just get into a step-by-step, -step, and I'm going to just jump first into our sketchbook. So when you open up the sketchbook, this is what you're going to see. It's going to be blank, and it's going to be white, and there's not going to be much there. But your interface is down here at the bottom right. Uh, you can change it over to the left if you don't like it on the bottom right-hand side. It's called a lagoon. And... The default is going to be a pencil, and it's going to be in black color. So if I want to just uh, write on this, and I say hello or hi, there we go. I've just drawn, I'm using my stylus now, because if I use my finger, uh, you can. And I can say this is my finger, but that's it's imprecise, especially if you need uh, some... Uh, some small numbers, you need to underline something. So you don't necessarily want this, so let's say we want to get rid of that. Uh, so we've got options here. If you hold down the left here, you're going to get this little radial right here. I never mess with any of these, but you can. You can airbrush, you can paintbrush. If you want an eraser, now you can just get an eraser, and you can just kind of uh, erase as you want to. You can probably figure out right here is where you're going to uh, change your color. So if you want to uh, write in red, you can do this. Now, how do you get different backgrounds? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, um, you can go to any image and make that your background. I just keep it as my, my open recent. So I'm going to, let's say I'm working on a third grade math re review right now. It's going to ask me if I wanted to save, but this is, this is an image I've saved. So when I want to do a math review, I'm just going to pull this up, and I'm going to draw, uh, draw on this. And if I want, I can kind of hide uh, that particular item there. And so I'm going to move this lagoon over uh, to the right. And so if I wanted to draw, I would put it white, and then this is where my map. I might do some, um, some 3 times 5 or whatnot, and then I can draw all over this. Now, 
what are some of the things that we want to be able to do with this program? So I pulled this, this, uh, this full UI. It's hidden, so you're going to have to play with everything. But when you hit this window up here, probably the secret sauce is right up there. It's called the toolbar. And this is where you get a lot of your stuff, this toolbar. So if you want to hit, you can hit things various ways, like this pencil icon right here is the same thing you can get right there. Uh, so if I wanted to uh, draw with this pencil, I could do that. I can change the different shapes. Like I said, it gets very intricate. If I wanted to add text, well, there's my add text layer. And it's going to um, add something, and it might say, I might say this is a text layer. And if you hit OK, there it is. But you're thinking, wow, that is uh, black, and that's not going to work. So if I wanted to resize it, I could, we could kind of do it. If I wanted to move it around, I could. You know what? I need, to, I need to change that text layer. So there's one final feature I want to show you on this. This is not meant to show you everything. Uh, file, you can add any image you want to just upload it from your computer. There's one window that we want. See, this is, this is the brush palette. If I want to get rid of it, I can do that little red dot. If I want to get it back, it's going to come right there. It's, it took me a while to figure this out. It's the layer editor. And that's where the secret sauce is. Because you see right here, and I'll pull it right here, this is actually a text layer. So if I wanted to, I can now edit the text layer. Maybe I like the text. I just need to change the color. And so I'm going to change that to white. And now I changed that text layer. If I wanted to uh, delete this entire layer, then you can just click it right here, and you can delete it. And that deletes just that layer. So if you didn't want to erase everything. There's a lot more to do with this, but those are the basics. So draw to your heart's content. You can just get your little pencil and just draw all over the place. So let's look at the second one. Let me get into my second option. That's the drawing program. Now, the, sh the sh screen recorder is ShareX. There's one or two buttons you need to know. When you open it up, it's going to look like this, which is not super user-friendly. All these are, these are my old screenshots. Um, and you are going to need to figure out two things. Uh, first, if you want, you can manually um, screen record like this. You can make it a GIF. You can take a screenshot. But that is kind of cumbersome. First, look at the hotkeys. When I screen record, all I do is I hit F5. So I'm going to do that right now. And you're going to see. Um, that it's wanting to record just this right here. And you see this countdown right there? That's the countdown. I'm going to hit abort, and I don't want to do that. Um, so let me close this down because it's. if I wanted to draw, I wouldn't want to draw on this. I would want to draw on, let's get back to this. So this is what I would want to draw on. So I'm going to hit F5, and... You should see down at the very bottom there is going to be a little start or abort button. So if I started this recording, then I can record, and then that timer is going to continue to go. And all I need to do is hit stop, and then now it's recorded. And I can find it in a file somewhere else. So that's how you get your video. Before we move on from ShareX, the rest of this you don't really need. Probably what we need to also realizes not just the hotkeys, you can make some more, but I just hit F5, that's how I get started. You need to figure out where your files are going. You know, I'm sure you've all had the experience where you save something and then you don't know where it's going. And so uh, you can look at the uh, task setting, and, and this is actually going to be in the application setting. Um, and you can there's so much customization here if you really want to mess with these things. Um, but if you want to look at your um, folder, you notice this path right here. It's actually in my users slash Aaron slash documents slash share X. 
So this is going to let you know where are my screenshots going because they, they're not going to go to a, your video folder. Or uh, you can just look at your uh, destinations and you can start uh, deciding where you want things to go. You can also access the screenshots folder here directly. And this is just kind of a, a shortcut to your just file manager. As you can see, these are all of my videos that I've taken in the past. So that's another way to get there, and that's in the, this PC, Documents, Share X, Screenshots. It's like four or five clicks to get what I need to. So that's only problem with Share X is figure out where the files are going. When you've got the files, you've got your drawing, before you can upload it to YouTube, you're going to need to open this VSDC video editor. And so there's a lot a lot, a lot of things that you can do with this, and you're not going to need 98% of it unless you're trying to start a production company. All I do is I would create a blank project and name it, so I might name it Sample, and this is all you're going to see. So if you've never done any video editing, any sound editing, you're going to wonder, okay, what do I do next? Well, you are going to want to grab videos and there's quite a few things I do with this and so this green button right here is one way to get it add video if you wanted to add sound add images there's a lot more you can do some animation I haven't played with any of this I just want the videos that are on my screen that are from the share X you can also uh, get into this editor button add object and then select the video down there but so let, let me grab a video from um, my folder and you notice as we get started it is going to go to my video that's not where I actually have my share X remember mine is going to be in uh, my documents there's a share X folder it's in the screenshots folder and then it does it by month so you have to click several times find your video and so let's see this was this was actually the video I just took of like three seconds you notice the duration is five seconds and that's all it is if that's all I wanted to do then I'm almost ready to export uh, there's two things you're probably going to want to do so first let's say I move my cursor to the very end if you want you can play it from here right you can just play it preview it make sure everything looks good sounds good right if you, how do you put two videos together well you would move the cursor to where you want to and you go back here to this add video and let's say it's a two-part video I did it in two chunks I want to splice it together with this it's going to ask me where do you want to put it I always decide to put it from the manual position. That means wherever my cursor is, that's where it's going to start. If you don't do that, it's going to layer it up on top of each other. And here, if I move this cursor back a little bit and just hit the play button, what you're going to see is that there is a seamless transition from one to the other. This is a video I just posted this morning. There are transition effects. There is all kinds of stuff. I don't worry about any of that. The reason why you might want to do two videos is, let's say you're trying to record a video, and it's a 10-minute long video. You get seven minutes in, and then you make a mistake, or your dog starts barking, or your kid comes in and asks you for you know, a snack, and that gets picked up by the microphone, and now the video is ruined. Don't start over from the beginning. That's why we have video editors. Let's say I wanted to, um, I liked most of this video, but there's a part right here at the end where my phone rang, and I want to get rid of that part. But one of the options you have here is to cut and splice. So I'm going to hover over the video segment I want, and I'm going to right click. There's other ways to get there, but I always just right click. And there's a cutting and splitting option right here. You left click on that and it's going to open up just that particular chunk. So what you could do is that you can watch your video and let's say um, it's right here. Right about here is when my kid asks for a snack. I'm going to pause it and I'm going to add a marker. And all that's doing is just saying at that timestamp, you're going to add a marker, which doesn't do much yet. 
play it a little bit longer and that's when you started back up so I'm going to add another marker so what I have is two markers and then if those are the only markers I want I'm going to hit apply changes and you're going to say well what actually happened and I'm going to zoom in a little bit but what you're going to be able to see here is I actually cut my video into three chunks this is the first marker right here this is the second marker right here if that's the part I want to get rid of I'm going to uh, highlight it you see it's highlighted hit the delete button right click delete slide this over and now you've just spliced your first video if you wanted to add another video at the end move the cursor to the end add a new video and you could do this again and again so if you're making, a, if you have a really long take, that is the most frustrating thing in the world is when you phone calls, there's some kind of extraneous noise, you listen to it and you're thinking, oh, that sounds horrible. I can't keep that in the final copy. That's why we need video editing. Just find that chunk, give yourself about three seconds of dead time, start again, you can always splice it out later. So let's say this is my final video. I just put three random videos together, it's good to go. How do we get it on to YouTube? Well. First, you need to export it. The format that this is going to have is not something YouTube will take it. If you save this, so let's say I want to save this in my videos file, and so I'm going to put this in videos, and I'm just going to say sample. It's called sample. You cannot take that video and put it up on YouTube. It's going to say does not recognize it. What you need to do is you need to export it. This is the final step. You're going to export it. Where do you want it to go? All of these options. The default is to AVI, and that's just a different file format. Just like computer uh, pictures could be JPEG, uh, they can be GIFs, they can be PNGs. You can do all of these different options. I always keep it right on the AVI, and I just hit the export pro project because that file format works. They're always going to ask you this. They're going to say, oh, would you like to, you're using the free version. Would you like to upgrade and pay for it to get the hardware acceleration? I never do because what it gives me without the option of paying for it is perfectly fine. So you see a little tiny countdown up here. This is going to um, get up to 100%. When that's done, then you are ready to upload it to your YouTube video. And so the final step, so um, I'm going to end up deleting that because that's just a crazy video. So let's, the final step would be, let's get into my YouTube channel. And so I am going to get into my uh, YouTube channel. And when you actually create it, it's going to be, it, you're going to see the back end of it. It's called the studio. And then you have to have the YouTube account. YouTube makes it pretty easy to upload videos. It's going to give you your, your statistics. It's going to give you how long people watch it and your duration and all of that. But this is my channel's um, background. You see your dashboard. you got your videos, your playlists. But how do you just get the video you made up on YouTube? Well, you hit this Create button right there. You're going to have two options. Upload the video, which is what I always choose, and then go live. The go live only works if you have another... A program if you want to stream live and this is what all the kids that play games and adults do and stream online they go live but they have to have another program running we don't want that we literally just want to grab the video and we want to upload it so this just gets you into your computer where is that video and so let me grab it's in my videos file let me just grab a video that I made this morning this is the one we just saved YouTube will not take this dot v proj it doesn't know what to do with that it needs to look like this this dot avi so let's say i wanted to upload this it's going to start uploading and it's going to give you a few options of what you want to do you don't have to do everything necessarily but it's going to ask you what is your title uh, what is your description it's going to get you your link uh, you have to hit next a few times. You can select your thumbnail, playlist, video elements. You don't need much of any of this. You just hit next, next, boom. It's up. Grab the link, and you've got your video up on YouTube. So I'm going to 
uh, cancel that because I've already that's a crazy video I don't want. So that is it. That is the the gist of what we need to do in order to uh, put our own videos up on YouTube. So then let me ask you just to think for a moment. I'm going to get back into my presentation mode, and we can use the chat feature. And so there's my step-by-step. -step. That's all my uh, information. If you want to find my YouTube channel, uh, I have a personal website. I, I've written several books. I'm an author. I do uh, education training as well. I also work at, in a large urban district in the DFW area. And that's my email address, Twitter handle. But what questions do you have? I'm going to open up uh, the chat on my end so I can see what exactly we're doing. And I will just uh, open that up to any particular questions that you might have. So let me open up the chat on my side. If you don't have any questions, then thank you so much. I'm going to have a recording of this on the website. If you're interested in one CPE hour, I am a, a certified provider for continuing professional education credits by the Texas Education Agency. There'll be a short quiz you can take on my website just to show that you watched it. But I'll, I'll stay on for just another minute, and if you have a question specifically you want me to answer, type it in the chat box on the webinar. And if not, thank you so much. This has been hopefully interesting for you, and I'd love to, I'd love to see your videos on YouTube. All right, well, I'm not seeing any chats. Um, if you have any questions, if, you're, if you get stuck halfway through, guys, my email address is right here. Email me. I'll try to walk you through it as much as possible. I'm not a, a tech support, um, but I will try to help you as much as I can. Thank you, Melissa. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and stop recording. And thank you guys for joining me for this webinar.